Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, hey, hey. All right, so this is off the top of my head, man. I would say 99% of the shit that I've made, I got notes written in my phone, in a notebook, or on a computer somewhere. Everything, but um, I think this this isn't, I, get, I don't know, man. Maybe this is going to be like more for me than for you. Maybe it's going to be like a little channel update. Because I'm kind of in a, I'm, in, I'm just in a position where I'm like, I don't want to keep doing the same shit. You know, uh, I mean, I still want to talk about line cook shit. That shit matters to me, but I want to change things up. You know, I've just been doing a lot of thinking, and, and instead of me just like, boom, I'm just going to start making fucking, changing it up dramatically. I think it's, I think I want to communicate to the team what's going on in my head what's you know why i'm doing what i'm doing and going forward you know so let's just do a quick recap into the beginning of this channel i started this channel pretty simple i just wanted to it was 2020 i genuinely thought like i was like this is it i don't know if i'll ever go back to work it sounds like the world like we're just fucking done. It sounds very dramatic now, but at the time, it was just, like, very uncertain. So I'm like, you know what? I want to make, like, I hate how the industry is just ran by these cooks that it's like, homie, join the army if you, if that's how you really want it to be. Why don't you go join the Marines? You know, go be a police officer. Go do something that, like, justifies the way you're treating us, the way you're talking like fuck man like it always just felt like like we're a chef's nut rag you know we we work for these guys we sweat and bleed and then and it's not that i don't fucking care like i don't need the the like thanks guy i don't i don't need to be on stage i don't need the attention i don't like that you know i'm not I'm very much not into that sort of thing but I guess, I guess it goes back to my to my survivorship bias video. It's like, homie, I'm glad that you did it by sacrificing your personal life, working seven days a week. You know, um, I'm I'm really happy you you know you pulled 27 hour days. I was, hey man, thank you. I really appreciate that. But this is not 2007. But we're talking about pre-2020 shit. And I, for one, want you to have a fucking life outside of this fucking industry. I love it. I love it. You might love your wife. You might love your husband. You need a fucking life outside of them. Because if you were the, oh, my wife is everything. My kids are my everything. Homie, even I can't stomach that. That's why I like making YouTube videos. That's why I like playing video games. It's a way I can it's it's something that's for me. You know, I like I like just putting on my AirPods and then just zoning out on YouTube videos and being on Reddit. It's just fun for me. It's 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 mindless. I mean everyone has something. And I think twenty I mean before twenty twenty I would say it was almost like cooking had to be your all and everything. And now for me, it's more like, no, it's cool. But I'm now aware that there's a lot of chefs out there that want to use that to make you give more than you should, to put it lightly. So anyway, I start the channel. And at first, I know I'm, I'm looking back at my videos and it's like, okay, so I kind of want to do, I tell stories just just bullshit talking, you know, it's like you and I are on break, and then eventually it became, like, educational, and now I, in my head, I was like, okay, I want you guys to know how to deal with certain situations, because I'm fucking tired of, like, uh, chef, you know that guy out, like, homie, chef, I understand that you gotta have thick skin, I understand that we're not all gonna get along, but it would be really cool if that guy could keep my family's name out of his mouth, I don't care. Oh, fuck. Okay. 
Well, I think I want to just let other cooks and like, listen, before you go to fucking Chef Tommy Bitch Tits, I'm going to show you how you can manage around this because, frankly, you're not going to get the help that you want. Again, this is a, listen, son, if and when I was ever in your position, I would have just fucking stay hard. Any bad thing, you know, uh, employee talking shit about your wife, good. More time for you to thicken up your skin, grow some balls. <laughs> Fuck out of here, man. Like, see, dude, if that's your mentality, go do a fucking real job like a fucking firefighter. Go be a police officer. Go join the army. Go do something. But you're t- calm. Da- you're making fucking scrambled eggs and French toast. How serious is it, really? Like, you know, I get it. You know, what What? What else did cooks, what, what else could you do back in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, you know? Like, there's no fucking internet the way we know it now. Of course you're going to, you know, it, There, there's like, of course you want to fucking make cooking your all and everything. But now it's like, no, nah, man, it's one thing that I've always admired about front of house. I love front of house. If there's one thing front of house taught me that I really took to heart, it is. I worked at a college town, right? And every restaurant that I had, most of them were college kids. And it was various age, not just like like teens and 20s. I mean, I'm talking like, you know, there were people in the 30s, 40s, going to school and stuff like that, different uh, nursing, dietitian, um, uh, literature, whatever the fuck it is. And it's, I loved how they would come in, bust their ass, you know, just normal, everyday fucking work hard. But they weren't, they weren't like, they weren't sucking the D of the industry. They weren't sucking D the way us cooks are. You know, they were like, homie, I clocked out. I'm going to go do some homework. I'm going to go work on a future that I want because I'm not going to be here for the rest of my fucking life. You know, that's something that's very true about, at least back of house, it's very transient. It's... It's very few the people that I've been around where it's like, I've been here for 10 fucking years, 13 years, and I've met a few of them, and most of them eventually find their cadence. They eventually find a rhythm where it's like, look, I work the six amount, and then I take two weeks off. I take four, I take a full month off. You know, two weeks in December, two weeks in January. I, I mean, I remember this guy, RC, rest in peace. He would do that. He was working in this company for 13 years, and he wouldn't. He knew exactly what he needed to do. No more, no less. You could never fucking accuse, um, RC of being fucking lazy or just you do the beer. Min-. No, that guy did his fucking job. And when it's time to clock out, it's time to clock out. I fucking love that guy. Yeah, man. Him and I would share just some of the fucking dirtiest. He loved that shit. He loved dirty jokes. If you had a dirty joke, he's the first guy you wanted to go share him with. Anyway. Anyway, that's... I really admire Front of House for that. And in time, I've been like slowly becoming less militant about the situation, about this industry, and more like I want to have a healthy relationship with Back of House. I want you to have a healthy relationship Back of House. I don't want you to be in the situation where I was for a long time where, well, he's the chef, and so I'm automatically I'm putting him on the pedestal, and now everything he said's like, mm-hmm, amen, that's, that's right, chef, that's right, chef. Nah, you know what? There's chefs, like my mentor, Paul, who, and it really doesn't feel like you're talking to an authority figure. You're talking to an authority, you're an authority figure in terms of like, oh shit, you know, you're the guy. No, he always felt like he always felt like you're a cook that moved up, and you brought all us, all of us with you. There was no fucking mystery. There was no fucking. He was never stroking his fucking eagle and using us like a fucking nut rag. You know, Chef Tommy bitch tits comes in. Whole different fucking story. Whole different story. You know, but it makes sense. You know, some people work from love. Some people work from ego. And so, 
And so I'm looking at my videos. And then, you know, I went through that Lank Cook tips and tricks because I wanted to educate. I wanted, and there's, look, I I always felt like there was this gatekeeping. And I do, I'm a gatekeeper in this industry. For sure, I'm a fucking gatekeeper. But there's a certain gatekeeping where it's like, I think anyone can do this. If you work in Jack in a Box and you want to start going work at the fucking five star restaurant, you one thousand percent can't, and no one should fucking tell you otherwise. A hundred percent. You know, I, I don't care if you work at Sub. I currently live in an area where there's no restaurants like that. You know, I moved after 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 I, uh, I got let go from my <laughs> after I got let go after making videos about the bullshit that was going on in the restaurant. You know, I went on to move to another restaurant, which really just, it was nice. It was like a refreshing, it brought me back to basics and made me realize like, fuck man, some of these restaurant group groups are very culty. Some of these restaurant groups, man, they will have you drinking the Kool-Aid and you will be saying more please. Anyway, so, my wife and I decide, you know what, let's let's move. So we moved. We moved somewhere where there's fucking snow. I'm not used to the snow. I'm I'm a Bay Area guy. And so if you're not from the Bay Area in California, let, let me tell you what the weather's like. 365 days without fail. 75 degree weather, sunny. You might get the um, overcast in the morning. So it might be what, like? 65 degrees, 60 degrees in the morning. Oh, no, it was a little bit, you know. It's like winter in the morning, and then by afternoon, and then by like 9 a.m., it's like a nice 70. It's cool. It's nice. No clouds in the sky. Maybe you'll go to the beach. It's really nice. You know, a ba- uh, uh, a bad day in the Bay Area is like, oh, my God, it's 60 degrees out. Or it's 80 degrees but typically, California Bay Area, mm, perfect weather, perfect weather. I think the only weather that can top us would be Southern California because it's closer to the equator. So, so now I live in an area where snow is a thing. Where now I have to start thinking about like thermals and like, I got this mask. I got this ski mask because I'll show you. I honestly got it just because it's like, let's just fucking blow some money. Let's just buy something fun. Let's, you know, I want to splurge something on myself. But now that I have it, and when it's out, like, again, my California ass can't handle that shit. So I get fucking cold. But check this out. This is like perfect. This is what you want to wear when you're doing your fucking counts in the walk. And when you're having to do your list or um, end of the month, you're doing inventory. This is it. This is it. This is the mask you want, buddy. Look at that. Look at that. Come on now. Come on now. You know who who this reminds me of? This reminds me of Lethal Weapon 2. Remember when they wake up the guy? I um, forgot what his name is, but they wake up the guy at night. They got these ski masks on telling him to, like, you know, fucking stay away from the case. Quit fucking digging. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. But, uh, yeah, I mean, look at this. Eight, six, back of house. This is what you see. I I ought to start a merch store, and this is the kind of shit I ought to, I ought to be selling. Can you imagine this? Just fucking a line full of fucking cooks wearing this shit. I think it's fucking sick. I like it, but it's fucking hot right now, so I'm not. I'm gonna take it off. Yeah. Anyway, so I move, and so I take a break because it's like a, you know you're dealing with a move. I don't I don't really have the mental space to be thinking about making videos. So, I take I took the summer off, and then I come back and I make that video, Forgotten Failures, and I don't regret making that video. You know, when I found out about survivorship bias, it cl- there's so many things that survivorship bias and in our industry just go hand in hand, 
And if we could only just adopt that word, adopt the word, know what it means, know how it's used, know how it's weaponized against you. Okay, because it is. Management's already using it against you. So I made that video because I was just enthusiastic about it. I wrote so many notes. I, I ought to share those notes. I got to figure out how to, you know, if that's something you guys are into, if, you, if you'd rather just read my notes, I don't mind doing that. So I put out the video and I look back and I'm like, fuck, dude, like, I don't want this channel to become like, like this boring NPR PBS fucking like, welcome to this old house, old Yankee workshop, like, fuck, like, those are good shows, man, but. I like educating. I love teaching. I love undermining management by telling you guys who aren't in the industry, you guys can do it by undermining management and saying like, dude, if you need to call out, call out. Don't worry. Don't worry. Listen, I don't care what anyone tells you. Service will end. Call out. You want to spend a day with your girl? Call out. Want to go see the new movie? Call out. Not feeling so well? Call out. Fuck it, man. In fact, I might even give you guys a homework assignment. Your homework assignment this week is to call out. You don't need a fucking reason. So I can't make it work. Why? I just can't. You don't owe your fucking boss a reason. Anyway, I don't want to get on a preachy thing. And th that's what I'm talking about. Like, I don't want this channel to just be like, inform me. Information is fun. But there's another key thing to working back a house. That's bullshitting. You know? And... I did do that for a while. I mean, I got 10 episodes of Beyond the Past. I got 10 episodes of A Cook Will Sway. But once I once I moved, you know, I didn't know what the future of the channel was. Parted ways. I've opted not to go back to that because for me, it just seems like, you know what? That seems like a perfect, nice, 10 episodes, clean. What more could you want? And then as far as my channel goes, you know, I mean, there was a moment there where I, I was like, you know what? I feel like my channel is perfect the way it is. Like how many how many videos do you think I need to make to remind you guys that, hey, you should hold hot items with a dry towel. You guys should keep a knife down and say corner knife when you're walking. You know, I know that I could put videos out like that all the time and they're going to get views because... Even though you've probably seen it, there's going to be another cook that's not going to go, they're not going to immediately scroll all the way down to episode 20, all the way down to episode 12. They're going to want something new. I could recycle fucking line cook tips and tricks till I'm fucking blue in the face, but I just don't, it's just not my thing, dude, you know? And so I started thinking like, okay, well, where do I fit in this thing? Because I cert look, it's weird how much I love this industry, but there's, so much of it I just don't give a shit about. Like, do you want to talk about, like, so what do you think about a farm to I don't care. I don't want to talk, like, I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, I don't want to talk about fucking seasonal things, or I don't want to talk about, like, let's talk about the history of food. Let's talk about, you know, so today we're with a uh, social content media creator at I Make Funny Memes Cook. So... How did you come up with that hilarious meme where you go into the walk-in and you forget what you were in there for? Holy shit. How many times do you really think I can fucking stomach a, one of those memes? No disrespect to any content creator that makes food. I don't follow you. Like, my Instagram, it's like I almost go out of my way. The moment I see any sort of, like, food thing... I just tell Instagrams, like, don't fucking recommend that shit to me. I don't want to see it. Like, I don't care. It's like, well, you can take a fuck. Like, how, how many knife tattoos can I see before I'm like, cool. I haven't seen that before. Oh, my God. I love the way you impose John Travolta into the walk-in confused because it accurately represents how I feel. Holy shit. Come, 
bro. Yes, I watched the bear. It was nice, but am, am I like, guys, did you, it was so, so like, I couldn't even, I vaguely remember. I think what, he go, he quits and then goes back to his family sandwich shop and he's trying to turn it around. I think the reason why, I, I, you know what, to be fair to the bear, I like it because it, it does just enough to make it feel like oh, authentic. Like my favorite thing from the bear was um, when the dishwasher, who fucking reminds me of Omar, rest in peace, my guy. He's like, everyone can have your attention. Please remove, you know, things from the, you know, the tape from the things before you send them to the pit. Boy, I tell you, I was watching it with my wife. My wife looked at me like, that's what the shit you're talking about. Sounds fucking obvious. It, it reminded me of uh, the dumb fuck who replied to my video. I was like, oh, I'm just not going to fucking do that. I still, it's funny on TikTok, there's still that. It's my most viewed video on TikTok. And there's still so many like, no, fuck that shit. Hey, man. But anyway, like, I enjoy those shows. I enjoy it, but it's like, I'm, I'm not making it my whole fucking personality. You know, I'm not... I'm not like that. And it, and it just leaves me in a in a situation where I'm like, what the fuck do I care about? I don't really care. Like, I have cooking books, but I'm not like, oh, my God, this. Mm, guys, what? tell me your favorite cooking book. I don't give a shit. Guys, tell me your favorite. Co- I, I, you know what I really fucking care about? Like, to be really fucking honest with you, I care about the people that I work with. I look forward to working on the line and whatever kitchen I go to, making it my own. Not in an ego way, but okay. Every kitchen has something they can improve on. How fun is it when you go and you meet other like-minded cooks, you slowly start creating these bonds, and slowly... While you're creating these bonds, you guys begin to create like a cohesive plan. Fuck, it's like I want to burp, but I can't get it out. That's what I care about. I mean, would you say I care about like the social anthropological nature of cooking? Maybe. Maybe I'm just trying to sound smart. But that's really what I care about. Like... My favorite area to go look at, I'm telling you right now, Twitter is just an awful place to even look up food. Like, I don't fucking care. You know where my favorite place is? Reddit. Because Reddit is the only place where it's like, it really feels like it's a mesh of shit talking and just passing along information. And I don't want to be like, I don't want to be over-educational. I don't want to be over like, I'm not trying to take myself so fucking serious, you know? A big part of cooking, a big, not even cooking, a big part of working the line is knowing how to bullshit. I mean, fuck, man, I should even just, I should try, probably just make, like, line cook tips and tricks that have nothing to do with actual practical line things. And more about, like, yo, the type of comedy that falls well in the kitchen is roasts. If you don't like being roasted, you're probably not going to fare well. If you like being roasted, even better. I love it. I can't I can't help myself. Sometimes I'll be like, I'll have like a little tiff with my wife, right? And, you know, you're in a relationship, they'll throw like a little jab. Again, it's nothing out of line. It's nothing out of pocket. But it, it hits a nerve within me where I'm like, <gasps> okay, you want you want to roll? You want to do this? And then she has to like, Jose, we're just having a discussion we're just having a little disagreement right now i'm not no i don't want to do that because i'll fucking take it there because it's fucking fun it's like uh i remember an early thing that i heard was like arguing with a cook is like uh wrestling with a pig in the mud something like that you know eventually you're gonna realize that the pig likes it and it's the same thing i don't mind you know i care more about I feel like the practical stuff can be learned, but it's the nuances of how do you go work in the kitchen? How do you 
conduct yourself in a man. No one's talking about that. Everything is like you you do your best and listen. This is a nice little technique I learned my in my time at the CIA. This is a little trick I learned when I was doing my stage with Thomas Keller. Okay, I get it, dude. Can you just show me the trick? Like, I don't mind learning, but that's not everything. If you think, like, that's why it's just so funny when it's like you got chefs like Tommy Pickles, Chef Tommy Pickles, where it's like, bro, you don't have to tell me you've been in management since you were, like, 22, 23. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell anyone because we can fucking tell. You talk about this shit like you read it in a book. You ever have a chef that talks about this shit? Like, like it's almost like when you're a kid or like not even when you're a kid. You ever go to class and the teacher's talking like what the – like they forget that kids fuck around. You ever like – or you get the, like those judgmental boomers – like, like they never fucking slutted out. Like, they weren't fucking whores in their younger lives. But somehow, like, we're fucking, like, oh, you fucking, fucking gang of fucking hoodlums. <laughs> but that's the culture, man. That's, that's what it's all about. That's what I like. And, you know, it's, you know. It's this, man. It's not the fucking white coat. <clears throat> The white coat is nice, but the white coat can corrupt. The white coat can just blind you and make you forget. And it's fine. I mean, you know, there's always going to be those people that just take everything really serious. And they have, I mean, I know people are just, fuck, man. Like, are you an NPC? Are you fucking with me right now? Because I can't fucking tell, dude. Like, you have no fucking personality. Gage. You, you like, everything is lit- literal with you. Everything. I'm not talking about anyone specific, but it's like, you ever, like, those kind of people don't make it in the fucking kitchen. You, they get torn apart. You know, it's, it's very, e- I can see how someone might get bullied in the kitchen, but the thing is, it's like, it's not... Again, it's, it's all roast comedy. It's all it, it all boils down to talking shit. And what I'm getting at is, I feel like I've been ignoring that aspect. Not every I don't want to be making fucking videos where everything's fucking education, where everything's like here's a piece of advice. Like I can do that. That's cool. But it just always feels like I mean, it's it's like if. If working the kitchen was just service, I think that would wear me out. If working with the kitchen was just prep, I'd probably end up bored. If working the kitchen was literally just training new cooks how to do things, it would tire me out. And and, and it's and I think like taking that break, you know, right now, I'm not working. Right now, I am 100% focused on my kids. You know, I am very fortunate right now that I'm in a situation that I can, I get my kids ready for school. I take my kids to school. I pick up my kids. I get the dinner. I like, I am the guy, you know, I take care of the house. I don't think my wife's had to do laundry one time. I love treating my home life the way like I would, like I have in my head, I got opening duties. I got closing duties. I have like, okay, on Mondays I do this. On Tuesdays I do that. Once a week I clean. I'll clean the living room, bathroom, ki- ki- you know. And then once a month I'll do a deep clean. I love that. I really do. I don't feel like, oh my god, cook, homie. Cooking is nice, but it, again, it's a, uh, it's a transit. It's a it's an industry full of it's transit. Yeah, it's a transit industry. Um, and uh, fuck, why can't I get a word out? You know what I mean? People come and go. Okay, the restaurant industry is an industry where people come and go, and it's very few people that will actually stay. It's very few people. It's like, hi, I've been cooking in this restaurant for seven years, and it's like, fuck, man, seven years. Are you like what's your what's your plan? I mean, I guess that's kind of what I think about. I'm like, what are you gonna do? 
you know, when you can't cook anymore. You can't, you can't, I mean, look, I know 50 year old cooks, they'll fucking work. They'll fucking work you to the ground. Don't worry about them. But at the same time, you're a human being. Do you have a life? Do you have anything, you know? So I can't imagine doing anything else. If and when. I'm sure eventually I'll end up going back to work. And of course I'm going to go back to the kitchen. It's, it's, I love it, dude. I love it. And not working in the kitchen makes me appreciate the kitchen even more. It's kind of funny, you know. I, I you know, I'm, I'm always talking how like anyone can be a line cook. How it, it doesn't matter what industry, and it really does change my perspective. Right now, I'm living in a town. I'm living in a town where there's no restaurant scene. I mean, there is if you consider chain restaurants a thing. If you consider the local diner who makes food literally just to feed people. I'm not talking about like, oh, so we're going to be making these wonderful, you know, creme brulee French toast with our signature maple butter, everything made from scratch. We make the uh, we make the bread here in house. We pick the microherbs in our garden. No, no, no. This is fucking like Cisco. I live in Cisco land. And a lot of these people that's all they know. And I can't I can't explain it, man. I went to like Taco Bell the other day. And there's like a, a subway also where I sometimes go get lunch. And it's like I look at them work and it's like, fuck, dude, respect to you. I don't give a fuck what any motherfucker says. You could easily work a really great kitchen if you fucking wanted to. And I'd fucking back you up on it and support you. You know, sometimes I was, you know, I was telling my wife, like, it's like I'm watching these guys cook. I'm watching these guys cook in, in Taco Bell, right? And it's like, these guys don't know that they could all easily be cooks in any restaurant they want. They could be in the top, you know, they could figure out what caliber. Some people want to go to the top. Some people want that NPC. We all look the same. We look down when a guest comes and says, thank you guys for dinner. Don't look up. Some people like that. That's fine. Some people like a little more fine dining casual. Some people like more casual. Some people like more of um banquets. You know, I, I st- listen, man. You're working at fast food. You want to go work in a restaurant? Do it. You got nothing to lose, man. You're all re- if you know what a nine pan and a six pan is, po- boy, you are overqualified. You you <laughs> time to move on. Okay, you know what a six pan is? Yeah, go apply at the fucking restaurant. But um, anyway, so I kind of want to take it more at a casual. I want to make it feel more like I want to feel when I record these videos like I'm on the line with you guys. So I'm going to try to be less like less technical. I'm going to try to be le- I'm going to like I want to be off the cuff, more off the cuff than I already am. I want you guys to get an idea of maybe who I am. Maybe, you know, maybe I have a lot of good ideas, but as you get to know me, maybe you're like, I would not want to work with Jose. Rambles on forever. Can't keep a cohesive thought. His brain just goes everywhere and he forgets what he's talking about all the time. (laughs) You know, Um, I do have... I don't want to speak on it, but I do have a plan for 2023 which is going to really help out with that. It's going to really help out, and I think it's going to make the channel go in a really good direction. So I guess right now what I'm saying is the channel's going through a transitional period, but it's only because I want this to be more of an authentic line cook channel. Again, it goes back to that. Authentic line cook back a house. Sorry, chef. I love that you're watching this video. Not for you. Sous chef. Respect it. Love it. Worked hard. I'm not talking to you. HR. Don't care. You're a foodie who's not. That's fantastic. You're a kid working at Taco Bell and you're wondering if you can go work at the fine dining restaurant down the street. I'm your channel. You're a line cook and it's like, like, can you imagine like, 
in my head, I'm thinking like, can you imagine like you just did 12 hour shift, you go home, maybe you want to go look at the new, the new fucking chant, the new fucking episode of line cook talk. And it's just me dropping knowledge like, bro, sometimes I just want to bullshit. I don't want to don't fucking educate me right now. I want you to bullshit with me. I want to talk about. I want to talk shit. I want to talk about good times. I want to talk about what the fuck's going because that's what we do on the line. What you think I'm on the line with other guys? Well, you so uh, what's your favorite style of cooking? At get the fuck. Out. Yeah, we talk about that, but let me tell you something. We're probably talking about who's the next member of OTF that's gonna get killed. And do you think there's a curse on Dirk? And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's cool too. You know, I want to talk. Fuck, man. You know, I want to talk about like the fucking music. You know, music is such a key element in restaurants that have that will let you play your own music, man. The the shit you hear, man, is so fucking amazing. That's what I care about. You know, I want to I want to talk shit about the the dishwashers that come in with actual swastika tattoos in their. I don't know what it means. He, some guy just put it on me and I thought it looked cool. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Like, that's real line cook talk. Not, what do you think is is the greatest uh thing that the kitchen, the kitchen has offered me so many things, but what has it offered to you that you, like, I don't give a fuck about that, bro. I want to talk about the asshole on table 20 who keep sending back food and just talk shit about him and maybe talk about like, so what the fuck's up with you, man? Well, I'm like, did you, did you end up getting the, uh, the new need for speed? Yeah. You like that? Yeah. It's pretty fucking sick, huh? Yeah, man. Listen, I play, uh, I, I saw that they had need for speed, hot pursuit. We master bro. You know, I'm going back on that shit. I remember that shit back in high school. Be playing fuck is that I, I, I didn't come to fucking line cook talk to hear you talk well that's what fucking line cooks talk about we talk about dumb shit it's not always education you know so in the spirit of keeping it authentic keeping it line cook not sous chef not restaurant industry line cook i want to shift and be more personable i want to be i mean fuck i've i've even been considering um live streaming like i kind of want to figure out okay when do most of you get off because i know there's different time zones stuff like that but if like it's like look if there could be like everyone gets off at roughly 11 p.m pacific time regardless of where you're at in the world okay like that's but fuck man i'd love to do like a post-service live stream a pre-service live stream and just fucking shoot this shit because that's what we do shoot this shit Oh, fuck, it feels really good getting this shit off of my chest because I just, I don't know, for a minute there, man, I just felt like I'm getting too too preachy, too, like, full of myself. Not that I was, not that I feel like I'm full of myself. Anyone will tell you I'm just, that's, that's, I'm full of myself when I'm kicking ass. But I don't want this channel to end up being some fucking, just another fucking channel another fucking podcast another fucking food media thing where homie yes some cooks do like to talk about that trend some cooks do like to talk about that shit but most of us just want to vent we're already on you know we're already on like high stress mode most of us are already just like you know just buzzed out on fucking energy drinks you know we're getting ready for service where we just got our asses kicked maybe you you're working with a guy that clearly doesn't fucking help and anytime you want to fucking bring it up nothing gets done because he has his tongue up fucking chef tommy bitch tits his asshole That's what line cooks talk about. That's real line cook talk.
Oh, you guys just bitch and moan. You bet your ass we are. If you're in an open kitchen, next time you look at those cooks, understand they're not talking about, oh, did you see the last episode of The Bear? Did you guys see uh the, hey, what's your favorite uh industry book? Like, homie, I like, I read over the summer, um, Kinch Confidential, you know, I read that shit. It was, it, it's a good book. I'm not going to shit talk Anthony. I'm I, No, I like, he's very relatable. But I promise you, most of us are talking shit in the line. Just really dumb shit. And I want to bring more of that really dumb shit to the channel because that really dumb shit is actually really fucking true. It's actually really fucking legit. I know you know it's true. And as much as I know that you love like, hey, man, give me some advice. Yeah, no problem. You want some advice? No problem. Q&A's all day long. You want another tips and tricks? I'll start formulating another one. But I need to fucking remember and keep this in my head that we like to bullshit just as much as we like to work hard. We like to bullshit passionately just as much as we like to put in our sweat and tears and blood into this fucking industry. Not for the fucking chef. Not for the fucking white coat. We do it because we're all we got. How many times have you just been left in the fucking dirt by a fucking chef or fucking staff? All you got is just you and the fucking dishwasher. I cannot begin to tell you how many fucking nights it was just me and Omar. 2 a.m. Restaurant closed at 10 o'clock. Dish fucking pit breaks down. Him and I, hand, just cleaning by hands, soaked up, you know? And the only thing I can do to, mo to like, you know, because I'm a lead, the only thing I can do to, like, say, hey, man, you know what? Here. Have a little of the uh, cooking brandy. You know, I want you to go out, go have a little smoke break. I'll keep cooking. Man, I'm telling you, man, some of the best nights of my life had nothing to do with service, had nothing to do with food, had nothing to do with culture. It had No, I take that back because that is culture. It had nothing to do with, oh, well, how can we work hard and get through this night together, guys? No. Just two cooks. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes it was just me. Aaron and Omar, two cooks bullshitting with the dishwasher, you know, sneaking drinks. Maybe manager would give us some beers. He'd say, peace out, guys. Just make sure you lock up before you go. And there we are till like 2 a.m. Just, you know, got our drinks, smoking, putting on me. Like, you know what? Fuck this shit. Put the music on the speakers. And we're just bullshitting. We're just talking shit. But that's real. That's fucking culture, dude. Anyway, <clears throat> I this is less about you and more for me. So I really hope I got everything off of my chest that I wanted to say. I went so off the fucking cuff with this that I don't, I don't even remember if I covered everything. But that's cool, man. Anyway, listen, if you're watching this, I really hope you have a great fucking service. Uh... I respect every fucking last one of you guys. I don't give a fuck if you're a jack-in-a-box, Subway, Burger King, fucking East Madison, whatever the fuck it's called, the French, you know, dry cleaners. I don't care. I hope you have a great service, man. And, yeah, I'll be seeing you guys soon. Listen, if you guys have any suggestions, anything, again, this is channel, this channel is for us line coke so if there's something you want me to talk about if there's hey i need advice on this ask hey could you do like can you give me like some tips and tricks i'll do it i'll repeat myself it's fine it's not a big deal okay and if you're like someone that's been watching for a while and you're like bro why are you repeating it shut the fuck up don't you realize there's a new guy coming in who doesn't know the same shit that you and i do you know let's go easy on it man let's make him feel welcome you know because if anything Wait until he meets the fucking white coats. They'll fucking crush his soul. It's not going to be me. It's not going to be me. It's going to be service and the white coats that are going to crush his fucking soul. Anyway, have a great service, guys, and take care.